I'm delighted to have with me Lokveer here, who's the founder and CEO of Pine Labs, and has been building the company for 10 years. And uh, uh, Lokveer can tell you himself, but I'm quite confident he has many, many more to go uh, in, in sort of the journey. So uh, I, I've had the good uh, you know, privilege and pleasure to serve on the board since 2009. We made a first $1 million investment um, in Pine Labs in 2009. And you know, the first few years were a little bit uh, rough, and then the company has really come its, into its own. Um, and now we have a little over $22 million invested uh, in Pine Labs over multiple rounds of financing. So we are delighted uh, to, to have a, uh, what we think is a category-defining company in payments in India. So look, it may be great for you to you know, uh, maybe give uh, uh, the audience a very quick two-minute synopsis on what Pine Labs is. And maybe just to help everybody understand the scale and how much, you know, how, uh, what we do in the payments ecosystem. Maybe tell us, you know, how much monthly volume of payments now we are beginning to, you know, uh, handle on, on, on our software platform. And also, uh, rather than ask you the question of, you know, who does Pine Lab work with, I'm going to ask Lopi the question of which large retailer in India does Pine Labs not work with? Uh, and, and you know, that, that's a much easier question, I think, for Lokweer to answer. Um, so, so why don't you give us a quick <coughs> overview, and, and, and then right. we should chat a little about your journey. Right. So, so Pine Labs, uh, today we offer a payment network to retailers. We connect retailers with the banks. Traditionally, this has been done where the banks used to go and deploy their point-of-sale terminals at the retailer countertop. We have substituted that with our own infrastructure, which offers lots of additional benefits and advantages to the retailers and also to the banks. Uh, before we go into the details of that, this month we are hoping that we'll do about 4,000 crores in volume. I mean, this being a festival month, we are seeing uh, you know, a big spending happening all across. Uh, this has been a fast-growing business for us. In fact, in, uh, in March this year itself, we were approximately at uh, 1,500 crores. And so in about a span of six odd months, you know, it's more than doubled uh, uh, the volume that we're processing. Uh, the proposition that we have for retailers is that traditionally, the offer that banks used to make to the retailers would be a composite offer that would consist of a financial offer and also a technology offer. Technology being that, that device that they put at the point of sale for the purpose of carrying out transactions. What we have uh, done is we have substituted the technology that is offered by the banks by our, uh, by our own technology, which leads to workflow automation for retailers. Their, their, in, their store processes get a lot more simplified. Their financial recon processes get a lot more simplified. In addition to that, we have started doing lots of value-added services with the belief that every transaction that happens at point of sale is actually an opportunity to engage with the customer. It's not simply a transaction to transfer funds from customers' accounts into merchants' accounts, but it's an opportunity that can be converted into a marketing, into a promotion, into a sort of building a relationship with a, with a merchant kind of uh, uh, opportunity. So most of the solutions that we are building, and, and there is a big pipeline of that, are oriented at converting a simple traditional credit card, debit card transaction into a far more potent and useful uh, tool for the retailer. And, and how many services are integrated into a cloud platform on the back end? Right, so, so a couple of years back, we, we, this was the, the change that we brought in, uh, where we uh, built this cloud-based platform where um, the entire intelligence of transaction processing has actually shifted from that device onto, onto, the, onto, onto the cloud. And that, that is a huge boon uh, for, for all the entities in the system. So now we are able to keep the front end very simple, which doesn't have to be changed frequently. And you know all the new services and new ideas that we do, they can be implemented at the back end. To give examples of that, uh, traditionally, I mean, for those people who know how credit card systems work, it is a merchant, then there is an acquirer, then there is Visa Master, and then there is an issuer, and this is how the flow of transaction takes place. What our solution allows is it allows various entities to have a direct presence at the point of sale, which means that an issuer can engage with, a, with, its, with its cardholder at the point of sale, which means, for example, building a plan like an EMI plan, something which has become very popular in recent times. So uh, almost 100% of the, this product EMI promotions in the country with people like Apple, Samsung, and Sony, and all these guys 
are carried out on Pine Labs platform, which allows people to say that these are the products I want to push in the market, and these are the kind of promotions I want to bring on top of that. Another example would be, like for example, reward point redemption, or loyalty programs, or gift card programs. So all these additional value-added services, they become part of the same technology infrastructure that we have created for the purpose of doing credit card transactions. But these are far more valuable for the retailer because, as I said, you know, he sees financial transaction as a commodity transaction to shift money from account A to account B. Everything else is customer acquisition for him. And that's where we have brought in this transformation into our system. So, look, who, who doesn't work with Pine Labs, which are the large retailers? No, I, I think most, most of the large retailers work with us. Um, and out of the ones that don't, I think most of them are in pipeline. So, for example, the pilots are going on with several new customers. Um, I, what I can say is that um, all of them want to work with us. Uh, so the, the challenge is to uh, justify to every one of them that why they have to pay us. Yeah. The ones who are still not working with us are the most conservative ones who still feel that, you know, uh, they're not convinced that, you know, why they have to pay so much to get the service from us. But we're working on it. So, so Lokvir is not, is, is too embarrassed to say this, but, you know, last night over dinner, uh, I, I ran into Lokvir uh, here in the hotel lobby. So I said, hey, I'm going to ask you the question who's not working with us. So he said, oh, yeah, lifestyle is not yet working with us. Um, and, and, and he's not saying that here, but practically all of India's largest retailers uh, are now using Pine Labs' platform. And so, so, you know, how does our competitive landscape look? Who do we compete with or, or don't compete with uh, in, in India? And, you know, it may be helpful for the audience to understand, you know, how do you get into this type of a market structure? Uh, that, that, that Pine Labs now has? Actually, I, th I think we have, we have an advantage because in a way we redefined the way credit card, debit card transactions were going to be managed. So when we, when we did the split that, you know, the banks can deal with the merchants on financial component of the offer and technology is going to be, you know, substituted. And that was the first of its kind, you know, proposition that went into the market. So obviously at that time there was not a lot of competition. Uh, but what obviously, you know, people have spotted the opportunity and uh, there are many people who are trying to, uh, to do what we are doing. And, uh, but I think, I think we are well placed uh, uh, because this business has network effects. The fact that we have a widespread presence, uh, you know, encourages more banks to work with us, encourages more product companies to work with us. And that, the fact that more banks and more product companies are working with us encourages more retailers to come to us. So for, for a new, uh, so there is, there is sort of you, this natural barrier that is there for, uh, for new entrants to come in. And plus, uh, I, unlike, you know, online space, at the, at the point of sale, the, the technology is a bit more complex and the regulations are very stringent. There is trust required with the banks before you're able to sort of, you know, accept uh, uh, cards on their behalf. Merchants don't trust someone very easily when they have to basically rely on your system to have that daily flow of funds coming from banks into their system. So, so these are the hurdles that people have to cross. But, but I'm sure lots of people are working on it and uh, some of them will find success and we'll see. And, and double click on the technology. W w why is it so hard to do what we do? I, I think that the, the way the financial systems work, at least the way we understand is that, that because of you know, various compliances and security requirements, they, they're very rigid. So the way, for example, the Visa and MasterCard have defined that, you know, this is how chip and pin transactions are going to happen. It has been defined in a very rigid manner. There are lots of certification and compliances that go on to it. In addition to that, the way RBI has made it further, you know, uh, a little more complicated by ensuring some further local India-specific regulations on top of that. So, so that makes the technological hurdle a bit difficult to cross. But what we are doing is that within this rigid environment, we have to build a platform that has enormous flexibility, which means that you know, without changing any of the restrictions that are uh, imposed on us, we should be able to play around with transactions, connect issuers onto point of sale, do product promotions on that. I think that is quite a challenging task. It, it requires, you know, uh, it took us a lot of time and effort to, uh, to really build that. I think that, that is uh, the uh, so Actually, barrier. that's a very good point, right? Look, most people think of regulation as a, as a barrier or as uh, inhibiting them. And in Pine Lab's case, has that actually helped us? It, it has. I mean, and I, 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 I mean, even though it made our life very difficult for some period of time, but I, I think it was a very good thing that happened. Because what happens is, you know, even so in our case, a couple of our competitors were not able to meet those requirements <coughs> that, uh, that, that were imposed. So, but their, their failure actually started reflecting on us also because we belong to the same category. 
So if suppose there is a data compromise at one particular you know, payments company, the non-banking payments company as a whole come under scrutiny. So the fact that you know, these barriers are being created by uh, regulators, that you know, security has to be so stringent, it improves the security environment and it improves that you know, it minimizes the risk for people like us that you know, there'll be no you know, fly-by-night operators doing payment transactions in the, in the country and, and so on. So it, it's, a, it's very helpful. Yeah, and then, you know, one question Lokweed and I keep chatting about, and Lokweed, I think the audience may, may be great to hear is, you know, uh, to the best of our knowledge, there isn't a company like us uh, in, in uh, other markets, and we couldn't really look to the developed markets and say, hey, let's do what's done in the U.S., let's do what's done in Europe. Um, you know, how are you thinking, now that you've sort of created a new way, like you said, to manage transactions, credit and debit transactions, you know, uh, what is the next path for us in terms of, uh, you know, we, we have a pretty large market share in India. Uh, you know, are we going to export this and so on? So. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a very good problem because we have, we've got used to this heady growth. And, you know, it's obviously visible that it's not going to be there forever, in India at least. You know, we, we, today we have about, uh, at point of sale, we capture about 20% of transactions. They flow through our network. Uh, we are expecting that in uh, next couple of years, that number will more than double. Um, so we should be having a very large share of the market here. And obviously that means that growth is going to be, we have to get used to smaller number of growth. But to compensate for that, we have to look for opportunities elsewhere. And uh, we are planning to uh, explore. And we have already started doing some groundwork on taking our model to other markets and uh, test it out. Yeah, so, so just to double click on that, I don't know if everybody got that. Uh, Pine Labs is hoping that 40 to 50% of all credit debit transactions in India will, will go through their platform, uh, you know, in the near term. So, uh, um, and, and, and because we want more growth, and, and you know, that number is growing pretty nicely because, you know, India is very underpenetrated. And I, actually there is, it's, it's not really a big battle for us because what we are doing is beneficial for all the entities that are connected with us. So the banks benefit enormously by all the new opportunities that we create for them to engage with the customer. So if we, for example, if we bring in uh, a new promotion from a product company like Samsung, that this is a promotion that's running, the promotion is funded by Samsung, which is doing its product promotions, but the benefits are being passed on to cardholders through the banks. So suddenly, from, from the bank's point of view, it looks like my card has become more valuable for my customer. In fact, we are, the, the couple of things that we tell to the banks who are, you know, are, are sort of, you know, a bit skeptical sometimes in terms of growing a market share, the two things we tell them is that wherever we deploy our solutions, we will prove to you that it's more beneficial for you. You will make more money on our system than you will on if you were to do it on your own. And second thing that we're trying to tell them is that India is such an un unsaturated market in terms of electronic transactions. We have a market size of retail spend of about five to six hundred billion dollars out of which $35 billion is what is electronic, which is on cards and, and otherwise. And most of the remaining is cash. So the, the point we're trying to make is that if we are able to convert our, or, or to make our card transactions look more loaded with more value, look cooler, look more fashionable, more, more this thing, then our battle should be to convert that remaining cash transaction onto the card transaction, which is good for everyone. So actually, this, this is a very important topic that you have co-opted banks, you have co-opted retailers, and you have purposely chosen to create a model over time which actually does not directly compete with the other guys, but actually complements them. Yes. And uh, how, how did that happen? You know, I mean, so, so how did you end here? Because it's been a long journey. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's been many years. No, right? I mean, I... In, in hindsight, it looks, you know, even, even we're puzzled why it took so long because, you know, it looks like such a straightforward thing. We should have done it in a couple of years, but it took us, you know, several more years. Uh, so when, when we started off, actually, I mean, our experience was we were going to retailers to sell loyalty programs. And, you know, in that process, we discovered the problems that retailers were facing in terms of managing this complexity of card transactions, standalone versus point of sale, no integration, no workflow automation, no networks, no IP-based communication, and so on and so forth. We started building very simple solutions for them. So that was the first phase where we were saying that we will bring in efficiency onto payment transactions. But once that started becoming, uh, you know, popular and, and started spreading out, then the other opportunities start coming up that can we do a little bit extra on that? A bank will come, you know, can you do something extra for my customer at that point of sale? 
and then we realized, we, we studied that technology deeply and that there were two realizations that came and actually that is the opportunity in the payment space. At, at a fundamental level, the payments technology is really a legacy. I mean, the way you use a card today at point of sale is not very different from the way you used it 30 years back. You still go to the same terminal, it is swiped and it chart clip comes out and you, you print it. And in 30 years, the world has changed. But the change has not really come into the payment space. And the reason for that is that, you know, this, uh, again, these are, these are rigid systems, you know, that all that global network ha is there. It's like, it's like what we're calling that, you know, in India, we have broad gauge railway, and the rest of the world is on a standard gauge. What will be the cost of changing that gauge to standard gauge? So that's the kind of problem that, uh, that you know, payments railroad faces. So, so that was, that is where the opportunity comes from. That when, when we realized that these are the kind of requirements that banks and issuers are asking for, that's when we uh, felt that we must build a platform that will be adaptable and open to change without having to, you know, really go through multiple recertifications in the process. And that's where this entire, you know, redesign of the payment system happened, where we built a platform that allows us to do what we call a composite tra transaction or a conditional transaction, which means while there is a flow of a transaction which is normal credit card processing flow, but we are able to pause it or interrupt it and you know, put additional condition of fulfillment on it so that you know, all these blended transactions can take place. And this is, this is where it uh, happened. Lokweer and Shailendra, thank you so much. It's thank been you very an interesting much. panel. Ladies and thank gentlemen, you. please give them a big round of applause. Thank you. <laughs>